You can hear us okay? Yeah. Good. Good evening. We'll call this regular meeting of council to order for Monday, April 28th, 2014. First item on the agenda is that the regular meeting be suspended and the committee of the whole meeting be convened. Moved by Councillor Carlick Pearson, seconded by Councillor Ashley. Any discussion? Questions. Questions have been called. Those in favor? Thank you. That motion is adopted. I'll refer Council to the Committee of the Whole Agenda for today's date. The first item on the agenda is the adoption of the Committee of the Whole for this date. A recommendation is that the agenda be adopted as circulated. Second. Moved by Councillor Kinney, seconded by Councillor Ashley. Is there any discussion? Questions. Questions have been called. Those in favor? Thank you. That motion is adopted. Under petitions and delegations, the first presentation is from Mr. Richard Pucci, the engineering coordinator with the City of Prince Rupert. This concerns a public works update. Is Mr. Pucci here this evening? We'll move on then. Next is a presentation from the KN Anti-Poverty Society. And uh, we have tonight uh, the chairman, the vice president, Pardon me, the vice chair, treasurer, as well as the secretary, as well as the director, and the K and Anti Poverty Society manager, and they're here to provide a community update. I'd ask those representatives to come forward, please. Make yourselves comfortable in the chairs here, and uh, when you're ready, we'll. Good evening. Thank you for coming down here. When you're about to speak, uh, if you press, it'll be grayish green to your eye, that button. Uh, you'll be on, and if you speak into the mic, uh, people that are at home will be able to hear you. And they'll uh, they'll want to hear everything that you have to say. Yes, pull it towards you, please. Uh, uh, the clerk is coming beside you there. He'll give you a hand. Okay. Okay. And uh, Councillor Cunningham, while well, you see that he's not here this evening, he is closer to you than he is to me because he's right there beside you. <laughs> if you, When you're ready to start, please go ahead and press that. Hi, my name is Simona Ionita. I'm uh, principal for almost 14 years. I'm the chair for Cane Anti-Poverty Society. I... Um, become member on two th oh, three years ago and um, two year two years I uh, was elected to be the chair and this year again so tonight we're going to do a presentation about the, um, our role and the goals for our society and what we achieved in the last couple of years uh, with uh, with our organization. Certainly. Would you like to start by giving us some background information on the K and Anti Poverty Society and where you operate out of, so people will know when you review your programs where they can contact you at? Um, we are uh, located on my K Street. Um, I'm not exactly sure the number. The fifteen. We have three units. Okay. If you. Please uh, pass the mic over. We'll get the public as informed as we possibly can here. Colleen Hermanson, manager. Yes, please of speak uh, directly into it, Mrs. Hermanson. <clears throat> uh, we have three units in what is called BC Housing, but that's the old name for it. It's now Macola Housing. We have 567, 569, and 571, three townhouse units in a row up there. Okay, thank you very much. Please proceed. Okay, so. Um, I say, You'll have to bring it closer to you. Sorry. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Ken Anti Poverty Society was established in 2003. We have grown and developed programs to suit and assist in meeting the needs of 
those in need. Our mission statement reads, we believe in the inher inherent value of every human being. It is our mission to assist, empower, and advocate of people who are experiencing poverty and to work for social justice and the elimination of poverty everywhere. CAPS recognize there are different degrees and types of poverty and that poverty has a direct effect on children and families and it affects health and quality of life as well. This concept seems to be directly related. CAPS is interested in practical solution to prevent poverty and in delivering services to those who do not have enough. We believe it is not enough to be anti-poverty or against poverty. We are for equality, sustainability, and the sharing of resources. The services we offer in our community right now are proof of CAPS commitment to the health and welfare of the community. Food security is a major concern for many people, and many people are willing to bring practical solutions to the table in order to support food security. CAPS and the gardeners are passionate about the community garden concept and understand it is related to community development and sustain sustainability. Many of our gardeners have expect level, expert level knowledge and some have resources to contribute even more than they do now to support larger garden with more community groups participating. People are looking forward to the community garden concept expanding to more space in the current location, which is east end of the town, neighborhood, and to include a kitchen and a community meeting place where people can um, learn and contribute. CAPS has implemented with community partners a food share program. We obtain about to expire produce from our local supermarkets. To date, Overvetti has contributed to this past year, 2013, 55,000 pounds of produce we have diverted from the local garbage dump. Saving many, uh, this uh, contributes to saving many dollars for overweighty, keeping appropriately one container full of <coughs> produce out of the local landfill and feeding approximately 5,783 people and their families in Prince Rupert. The Shopper Drug Smart are contributed with some uh, dry stable goods, baby products, health products, snacks to assist in filling the bags of those who come to receive a bag of groceries. We are hoping to bring Safeway on board in the near future and any other local merchandise that feel they have something to contribute to this program. The program operates several days a week from three locations. Mondays, Wednesdays, Friday, the food is distributed in the east end of town at the Makula housing neighborhood. From a laundry room, they make available to us. Thank you to them. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and the food is to distributed in the west end of town at the Makula housing neighborhood on McKay Street. On Sunday, the food is delivered to the Catholic Church lunch program for distribution by the church volunteers. The only day of the year the program shut down is for Christmas Day. We offer the food share program to 11 different groups of citizens in our community, and we are seeking a means to assist. For, our, for your information, it's going to be an inter-society meeting Tuesday, April the 29th, tomorrow night at Northwest Community College, room 155, between 7 and 8.30 p.m. for people who are interested in to come and take part of this meeting. Um, something else I want to say, it's what I'm saying right now, it's from my background, from where I'm coming, and the life I kind of experience. Honestly, right now, I'm, and I, it's nothing to against or, I don't know, I don't want to offense anybody. But honestly, right now, because, and this is coming from being more outside in the community and getting, being involved with lots of people. And just because you guys probably, I know you are outside in the community, but I am part of the real life of people who really live in poverty in Prince, in Prince Rupert. Maybe you don't see it. I see it. 
actually I see people every day live in poverty, which for me, coming from a third world country and live in poverty, I don't think so. I don't think want to see something like that in Prince Rupert. I don't know how you're going to sleep in the night time, but I'm not sleeping when I know kids and seniors in this town, they suffer and they come at Mackey Street to have a bag of fruit and they are not able to go and buy them because they don't have the money and what i see today the price is four dollar for a uh, some uh, strawberries okay and the next day you go and it's six dollar and they stay and they are rotten and the, their grocery store but People, they cannot buy them and they are going to go in the garbage because they don't have the money. Because if you stay and you think we have a meeting, uh, a potluck uh, three weeks ago, we have seniors. I call her grandma and I, she's not here t tonight. But I, honestly, after I have the discussion on her, when she was sitting on my right side and she told me, you know what, I'm staying in a busy housing ha um, apartment and down Solis, uh, I can't remember the name anyway. She told me after I pay my rent for BC housing, it's nothing left from my paycheck, and I'm looking after three grandkids. And she is probably 75, that woman. Really, I, I was so upset when I hear that. So what I see and what I hear around in Prince Rupert right now, everybody's like, oh, my God, LNG is coming. We're going to have millions of dollars until LNG is going to come. We have people who are starving now in Prince Rupert, and I want to see what we can do together with you and other organizations in Prince Rupert to have make sure our kids, they don't go hungry in bed and they have a roof under their head. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next, please. Just to if you'd use the microphone, please. It'd allow people at home to uh, hear what you have to say. Just to expand a bit on the history of CAPS, as we are commonly known as, <laughs> uh, in about 2003, a group of people decided to formalize and make it an actual society. In the past, it had existed, but it was very informal, and it was various groups that just came together. But in 2003, they formalized and became a nonprofit society. And we have since become a charitable uh, uh, society as well. Um, we have always resided in BC housing. The rent has been... Uh, accommodating. <laughs> We've had a very positive working relationship with that agency and look forward to our new relationship with the agency Macola Housing, our new landlords. We are seeking to expand our children, youth and parent programs in the east end of town where Macola has properties that they manage. The child and parent programs are funded by the Ministry for Children and Family Development. We have an ongoing contract with them to provide those services. In the past two years, we were able to offer teens who resided in BC Housing to take part in an education employment opportunity whereby they received specific training and were placed in work experience situations with businesses in the downtown area with a paycheck that was funded by BC Housing. With BC Housing bowing out of this capacity, we've had a positive discussion to offer this summer program again with Makola and our hopes are that we'll be able to offer this to teens again this year. The food share program has been offered for the past two years plus. We have observed the people seeking the services grow and grow. On many days per week we are seeing up to 50 bags of groceries being filled. Our hope is to have Safeway join the program and begin to offer their about to expire fresh produce. There are often unusual fruits and veggies that people are not familiar with, nor how to prepare and cook them. We have begun in a small way to show folks what items are by providing a book to read should they be curious and a means to obtain a recipe to prepare the food. We've had a demonstration cooking session and handed out the cooked meal the next day. It was greatly accepted and we received positive feedback as a result of that. We wish to expand the idea of cooking with different foods so that people can come to a community-like kitchen, cook with strange foods and take samples home to share with their families. The current community garden has provided families with space for the past four years and our gardeners are looking forward to another productive year. During the term of the garden, we have not had an available plot. They've all been rented out. 
during the term. All plots have been accessed and we have gardeners returning each year. We are in need of additional space for gardeners to garden. We believe neighborhood gardens should be erected so folks don't have to travel too far to get to their patch of ground. We believe greenhouses need to be developed in our community to allow for year-round growing seasons. If we, Prince Rupert, look to sustainability, we need to consider all aspects of growing food. Our partnership with Transitions Prince Rupert and other groups is looking to those means, which is the meeting that Simona was referring to that's taking place tomorrow evening. Our relationship with Ministry for Children and Family Development continues to grow and provide the opportunities to bring children, youth and parents together for activities and companionship in a positive environment. Their children and their families experience healthy snacks, fun and games and great conversation. We look, off, we look forward to offering a second location in the same programming in the east end of town. We've had this discussion with McCola and we're hoping to open a second unit across town in the near future. The free store located in the west end of town provides ongoing assistance to those in need of clothing, household items and at times large furniture items. We also appreciate all the donations that come from the community and groups. Without the donations, our free store would not have the product to offer those who are in need. As you can see, we are on the ground connected to people who are experiencing difficult times and assist them as best we can. We feel we are advocates for those citizens of our community and speak out for them when we can. Recently, we are being made aware of rent increases for people who cannot afford those increases. Where will those people go? We recognize we are on the verge of a community boom and realize that with the boom, bad things may happen to vulnerable people. Who will see to it that their needs are being met? CAPS feels our community needs to pull together and develop a social plan that encompasses all projected needs and work together to fill those gaps. Thank you. Is there another speaker? <coughs> we have with us our secretary. Okay, I'll trade, trade seats. <laughs> Hi, I want to thank, thank you. Good evening. Good evening. I want to thank the mayor and council for hearing us and having us here tonight. And it's a wonderful opportunity to have the eyes and ears of the community right now. I have my name's Tammy Lucio, and I haven't been on the board that long, but in the short time that I've been on the board, I've really observed some incredible passion. Um, people who have some of us, uh, we know a lot about poverty and we've experienced it. It's been in our lives, either our lives or the lives of our friends, families and our neighbors. Um, so much passion on our board for the issue of poverty. Um, and the other thing I, before I move on is anybody out there in the community, if you need, you're not sure where to go, if you're in need, you need food, even find out about our programs and come start at CAPS because it's a good place to start. One of the things that we're talking about is having a social plan for this community so that we know that there's people out there not suffering alone without food or living in conditions. And it makes me really emotional and m much of our board too when we think about people in our own community that don't have enough. So it's a really exciting opportunity. I'm very grateful for our staff. Um, they're there every day with kids, little, um, and the kids, you know, they come with their needs. They might be hungry. They might have had a bad day at school. And all the kids love swimming in this community. So CAPS takes kids swimming. But you know, we're, we're, we're kind of resource poor. We're idea rich, but resource poor. We so, don't even. So are we. Yeah. Yeah. Well, welcome <laughs> and we're to the all club. tired of it. Yeah. So we yeah. we are feeling really strong. What CAPS is doing right now is we're taking a look at our our a strategic plan, and um, what I'm finding is that again and again we see the same themes. We want to address the gaps. We want to find the resources. We want to have our programs out there. We're on the front lines. We know what it's like for people. So we want to have that opportunity to have a say for everybody in this community, so that everybody you know has enough so one of the things that we are doing is our strategic planning and through strategic planning probably a lot of people in this room have been through a strategic planning process at some point we identified I'm, I won't go through all of that because we're it is it is kind of preliminary we've had two sessions 
the passion, the commitment, the ideas, practicality, philosophies, the values, uh, just blew my mind when we sat down and, and actually had those meetings. So I just want to, I'm going to talk briefly, I'm not sure what our time frame is here, but a little bit about, um, I was so impressed with our values, I want to share them. The first thing that came out was that we value equity, respect, and the city of Prince Rupert, inclusiveness and honesty, responsibility, trans transparency and accountability, equality, dignity, and sustainability. And um, it's wonderful to be a part of an organization when I know that the staff, the volunteers, the board, that we're all on the same page that way. Sometimes it all breaks apart when we get into the discussions about how to do it, but that's that's to be expected. And I, I really have a lot of respect for us as a group right now because we're going through it. We talked about um, poverty as well. And poverty is not just food. And this is, I think, where some of our strategic planning ideas are coming from. Food, um, you know, that takes care of the belly, that takes care of the day. We want to help people to get the resources so that they can move on on their own. There's a lot. I, I as I'm a social worker, um, my, my gut feeling is that people aren't always accessing resources in town and we also um, without without a social plan you don't really know if you're reaching the right people you don't really know the impact of the work that you do so we are out there caps is really saying as a group right now that what we want to do we would like to have a place where we're not just serving food or we're not just doing food we're helping people come together as a community and building a real community place where keep people can meet and build on their strengths take care of themselves and each other which is what happens at caps every day um, the other thing I wanted to, to just if I could talk touch on briefly is that we're very concerned about um, we would like I that, that I went in the wrong direction there forgive me we are very interested in a community forum we're very interested in communicating with other service providers in the area and with the city about what we can do to reduce poverty and um, take care of particularly child poverty in our city because we know that BC has I and I know that Simona knows a lot about this too, is that we know that BC has um, not changed um, the low income cutoff rates. We know that child poverty, I believe we're the second highest province in the country for child poverty, and we know that that rate hasn't changed. And we just want to see things like that um, moving on up and taking care of those things in Prince Rupert, reducing child poverty. Have I done it? Um, how's the time? You're just about there. I could go on. I know you could. <laughs> I, can, I, uh, I can hear the uh, passion I in your voice. <laughs> the one other thing Please that I Please pull it a little closer to you if you like. That here, cord should stretch. Okay, let's hug. Let's hug. <laughs> the one other thing to kind of communicate to you too is that uh, BC is one of two remaining provinces that does not have a poverty reduction plan in the province. We have been working with a couple of uh, regional groups to try to put pressure on Victoria to get with the program. The rest of Canada is doing it. What's wrong with BC? Okay, thank you. If you're... Sorry, uh, we're planning to go and uh, meet with uh, our MLA, Jennifer Rice. Certainly. We're supposed to meet with her last week, but something happened and we, um, I, we can meet with her but we have this in a plan and this is we're going to bring up to the poverty uh, on BC not just on Prince Rupert and to see what we can do and I hope Jennifer she's going to let our voice here and Victoria thank you thank you we'll see if there's any questions from members of council councillor Ashley councillor Kinney councillor Carlick Pearson well, first of all, thank you guys for your presentation. Um, I really appreciate your heartfelt comments and insight into all of the troubles facing, especially the vulnerable people that are in our community. Um, and it's obvious that you guys have had a lot of time and have put a lot of thought into thinking about what sorts of things can be done and what sorts of things um, you'd like to do. Um, I think like from a city perspective, taking some of the, the items you've talked about from a, you know, lobbying the province kind of thing. I think those are certainly things that we can do. What I'm uh, wondering though, um, I've heard you mention about a social plan for the community, which does sound like a very good idea. Um, and I think it is something that perhaps 
uh, as city council, we might be able to help you facilitate it. But I'm wondering if there are um, some specific things that you're you're looking for. What what would you be looking for from city council in terms of how we could try and help facilitate it? I, I know you guys know that there's not lots of uh, you know money, but I'm certainly thinking that there may be something we could do. Would you, you press, uh, press the button? Right. Sorry. I think that for us going to the community and finding out from on the ground um, in terms of speaking to people, interviewing people, find out what the needs are on the ground, um, looking at statistics to find out how many children live in the community, how many live in poverty, what the income is, um, what we're looking at in terms of families struggling and what the quality of life is out there for people, measuring that. Um, finding out how many people are actually receiving services and, and actually are we getting a bang for our buck out of our nonprofit organizations in terms of figuring out who they serve, um, what, what are the interventions and whether or not the interventions or the services, um, you know, meet that goal, measuring it, um, identifying gaps, identifying, um, overlap in terms of, um, mandates and missions. And then, uh, just at the end of the day, what makes a good community, you know, what makes a good quality of life and seeing to it that someday we are able to access those resources to ensure that everybody in our community has has that. Thank you. Councillor Ashley. Okay, so um, I can see like, I mean, you guys are one organization, but we know there's many organizations in town. Would you see it perhaps being something where, and obviously with your help, where you would be looking for us to try and facilitate uh, a meeting of those various groups together so you guys could together um, talk about all of those issues and what those questions are and find out whether or not some of those groups actually have the answers that you're they're looking for? If you look at the organization that we have on Prince Rupert, where I'm, I'm starting talking about the Salvation Army, uh, uh, it's um, Transition House, uh, we have Friendship House, we have Success by Sex, uh, Northern Health Authorities, um, you guys, um, uh, there and plus this, maybe we can bring on board the big organization, Ridley Terminal, Port Authority and other people who are coming, we want to bring them on a board, not on board with us, but to be aware what is going on in Prince Rupert and maybe together we can put a, a, some something together and then work together. Because okay. if you stay and you think about, I, actually we probably double, we we double every single um, like Salvation Army work. They want to against poverty and stuff and like that and helping people. And why aren't we doing the same? So why we don't get at the at the table together and work together? Thank you. Right. Do uh, have you talked to the port at all about their community outreach programs? Uh, have you looked at their criteria at all? And we sent a couple letters in the last. Uh, couple years ago yeah. and we asked them for donation honestly we don't receive nothing from actually the port authority the single person right now who help us and start coming in a board it's Ridley terminal who give us a check for one thousand dollar every year oh, sorry <laughs> month uh, start two years ago and we yeah. really really appreciate yeah, they're, them. they're Thank a you. good supporter of the community they also uh, uh, pay for uh, on an annual basis, uh, some uh, activities so that the kids can have a a free day at the recreation facilities. So my like I'm I'm here and I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings or something like that. But I know that organ this big organization they have funding right there and they can help us. Like honestly, right now our volunteers they are seniors. Okay, there are people who are over 60, 65, right. 70, 75. I wish I can see some, sorry, 80, <coughs> 83, 93, 93. Okay. okay, so, and, okay, in other words, what I really like to see, people, they said, <laughs> I'm bored on Prince Rupert. Honestly, I'm not bored. I wish I have a little bit more time to volunteer my time to this organization and to people to help people outside okay. and Prince Rupert. I want to see young generation to say I'm not bored and Prince Rupert come and help us and then life is good and Prince Rupert I'm yeah. telling you. You'll, you'll find that when you're dealing with uh, governments or agencies or or various groups uh, such as corporations of various types that you need to in fact adhere to their 
criteria to be able to access their funds. Councillor Kinney. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, through you to Colleen, about how many are you getting out for the gardens? Or sorry, whoever. There are 11 garden plots and they are filled. They're they're rented, they're leased, they're they're used, right? Um, I can't say because I don't have that figure in my head as to how many family members participate in each garden box, but I would suppose, knowing who some of them are, that there are probably three to four members of the family that access each plot. Right. And you said they're rented? Sorry. You said they were rented? They are rented for $35 a year with an additional $5 to pay for the key that they have to access. It is a locked facility, right? However, if people are strapped for cash and they're unable to make that $35 payment, we do give them for free. Thank you. Councillor Carlick Pearson. Thank you for your presentation and your uh, volunteer hours in our community. It uh, doesn't go unnoticed. Um, I do have some questions just for clarification for the community. Um, if someone wanted to donate monetarily, how would they do that? Is that is that allowed by by the... We'll take anything. <laughs> Heavens! <laughs> we, we would take cash. Indeed, we are able to give a charitable receipt as well. And also, do you have social media sites out there? Um, I know a lot of the, just hold on one sec before you push it, because it disconnects me. It's okay. Um, we have a lot of people out there uh, that I know that keep saying, hey, you know, do you know when this place is open? You guys, because I've been there. And, uh, and I'll say no, but maybe, and we try and search it out. So, yeah. We do have some information on Facebook because that's where everybody goes these days. And we do have the start of a website for the society, but it isn't filled, if that's the term to use. We're working on it. But the last thing I want to say is I, I don't think that poverty is on our top five, you know, things of importance in our community, which it should be as well as, you know, our children, our youth, our, our elders and whatnot, and they're not. Um, I'd like to get involved personally, whether it's on a council level or myself, to get involved with a community and start networking out to, to try and find more resources because, you know, we just got back from a trip and, um, you know, people always say third world countries have these huge issues of poverty. Well, you come back and you take drives around Prince Rupert and you see the similar situations with parts of Prince Rupert that you see in a third world country, but it's not talked about as much, you know. Um, we, I think that with our assistance that w what uh, Councillor Ashley was talking about as well is that whatever I could do personally to help, you know, bring more exposure and however it may be, I'd, I'd like you guys to feel open to, to contact me. Um. Did uh, I was part of the fundraising for uh, Okala Foundation, which is somewhere in South Africa, okay? So uh, we have a video where the kids, they can see us at the same time. One of the question for one of the kids, and that was, so you're living in a country where you, sorry my word, you poop in a clean water. And that was really like, coming from a third old country myself and here a kid six years old asking me that question was I honestly and but what I want to say and that night we raised over probably 25,000 and that night from people from Prince Rupert helping somebody in South Africa what about raising $25,000 in Prince Rupert to help our people in Prince Rupert thank you Please go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Uh, a couple of questions. And one, I really appreciate the work you do. Uh, you were talking about uh, new areas for community gardening. Have you identified any plots or areas that would be that are city land that you could use? Good evening, Barry. It's Colleen. 
Hi, Colleen. There was a piece of property identified by Gord Howie and some of our board members a few short years ago, and that was the abandoned kid park opposite the old BC housing complex on Frederick Street. Uh huh. We had discussed with him a piece of property that is fenced, uh, that's like a basketball court up in the Overlook Street area, but felt that it might be. Uh, difficult for people to access but we thought because it was already fenced it would keep the deer out that's always the biggest problem around this town you don't have to worry about the kids vandalizing it's the darn deer <laughs> you need nine foot fences to keep deer out and uh the other thing is councillor ashley and councillor judy carla pearson both indicated they like to volunteer and I'm more than willing to volunteer, too, so maybe uh, the three of us can come down one day and talk to you, Pauline, and work something out. If there's a will, there's a way, I'm quite sure. Thank you. Your offer is greatly accepted. Okay, when I get back to town, I'll come and visit you. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor uh, Carlick Pearson and then Councillor Garan. Uh, just as a note, if you could, you know, on Facebook, and I'm sure that, Colleen, you probably don't do it yourself, but your daughter's probably doing it for you, and <laughs> somebody else is probably doing it for you, but uh, if you, I'm not sure if you do have a, um, have a, not an invite uh, events page, but a, like a Facebook garage page that I'll get notifications or whoever will get notifications and say, you guys are having a bake sale or whatever garage sale that we know about these things because I, they're very important. And uh, with that being said, is um, I I recently had a, an artist donate a whole bunch of different um, pieces to to me for stuff like this. So I'd like to donate to print of some sort uh, from Alana Wazurza for you to raffle off for for yeah. We was just talking about <laughs> we have a meeting last <laughs> last week, yeah. la, sorry, yeah. last month, and we're going to have a, a raffle, and we're looking for donation yeah. for the prizes. Yes. So thank you so much. <laughs> Councillor Garan. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you so much for all the time and effort you put into the community. Um, so it's Social issues are really the province's baby they're not ours but it affects us greatly um, and I think we really need to go after the province because the way social services are delivered it, it's just it, it's the system to me is broken and that we've got to fix it somehow and we shouldn't have to have six different groups working you know separately and so, you know it, there needs to be some cohesiveness and I think the province needs to get on side and come down with a program that actually works it, it's just so broken right now and I really commend you on your efforts. And I, you know, I think all the work you do is is great, but but it's it, there's just not enough there to try to change things. Like you're you're just running around putting band aids on everything. I mean, they're good band aids, but it, it'd be nice if the province could get on board and, and help fix the problem. So um, I'm I'm 100% behind you guys. <laughs> and if I do have some spare time, I'd love to come out and help you. <laughs> Thanks. The city of Prince Rupert has been talking with a readiness project coordinator. And we have been talking to the coordinator and reminded the coordinator and others, some that work for BC Housing, that there are existing needs in the community. Never mind the consideration of what's coming forward in terms of development and the additional needs that are created there. So we've created some awareness. Uh, you've struck a chord here you've uh, got uh, three more volunteers you didn't have a half an hour ago and when you get yourselves organized uh, you've got some good exposure tonight throughout the whole community because this is televised and as you go forward uh, if there's some way that the city although we don't have funds for you but we could provide a meeting space or help in some other way, provide some support, or you come here and make a formal presentation about one or two specific issues that we can then write a letter to the provincial and or federal governments about. We're certainly welcome to do that. Yes. Hey, saying that, what about having someone in the future build 
uh, addiction uh, or a wellness center in Prince Rupert, right here in Prince Rupert, why we have to send our people and our kids, our youth, who need so much help, and they are the future of our community and Prince George for a couple of weeks and then they come back, where are they going to go? They're going in the street and they start again. You put them in a drunk tank one night in a police station, the next morning where they are, at the liquor store and stay at the front door open to wait for them to open the so why we don't have something like that in Prince well, no nobody disagrees with you and we've heard that before. But if you could get a hold of some of the other organizations that you've mentioned have some information put together, you bring that information here, we can take it to our community-to-community -community forum where they also have the same concerns. And perhaps together in a united way because we represent uh, four or five, six, when you conclude the regional district, district, seven different entities, we could lobby for something like that. Okay. And there is already a need for it. But if you could put some information together through all the groups you've mentioned and bring it to us, we could certainly share that with the Community to Community Forum, which has representatives from Lackawalams, from Metacatla, from Kitcatla, from Hartley Bay, from the District of Port Ed, the City of Prince Rupert, and the Skeena Queen Charlotte Regional District. My question to this organization is, if they have the money to build um, when was the Elizabeth apartment, a building of... I don't know how many millions is going to be. Maybe we have to get together and find the money for a wellness center here too, you know. And honestly, this is my mission now in Prince Rupert. Thank you well, so much. <laughs> th thank you for your presentation. I make one comment. Uh, even though it's the provincial's responsibility and jurisdiction, it is, it is our community. And I really think uh, if any solutions are going to be found to these problems, they've got to come from our community and the people like you and that and the people sitting on this council, we have to find solutions for our own community because I don't think the province is, you know, we've already had one very tragic incident in Prince Rupert and, uh, you know, we need to find solutions for some of these problems within the community. And as much as I'd like to see the province kick in, they just don't seem to be that interested. And I, I really think that, uh, like I sit on the board of directors with the Unemployment Action Society, and we serve a lot of the same clients and that. And I think there's a common need for a lot of these these grassroots societies to get aid and volunteers. And it, it's a struggle to get people out sometimes because they all fly under the radar. People just don't realize how much need there is in this community. Nobody will disagree with you, Councillor Cunningham, but these things do start with community awareness and then some solid background information and then partnerships with anybody and everybody, whether it's at the community level, the provincial level, or the federal level. And I'm not saying I'm, I'm doing myself, so okay, yeah, this is in my head and this is my goal, but then I'm going outside in the street and I'm telling you I'm going to find these people and we get together. You know me. <laughs> I, we're all in trouble. <laughs> yes, well, we're, <laughs> we're, in, we're encouraged that you're taking it on. Thank you. And if there's, uh, we've already discussed how we could possibly help you, so please keep that in mind. Thank you so much. And once again, thank you for all coming down here. Thank appreciate you so it. much. Thank you for listening to us, and we really appreciate having us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Next, we'll have uh, Mr. Richard Pucci who's the engineering coordinator of the city of Prince Rupert to provide a public works update. Good evening, Mr. Pucci. Good evening, Your Worship and uh, Honorable Councillors. Sorry for my tardiness this evening. That, that's okay. We understand that you're here to provide an update on what the Public Works Department is currently working on. Correct, yes. Um, so I've been asked to provide uh, you with a quick engineering and public works update. This update is a review of where we are currently at with our capital works projects, our ongoing projects, and a bit about the present state of our existing infrastructure. So our capital works projects are bridge repairs. We have completed minor repairs on the 2nd Avenue bridge abutment. We have purchased the material required to replace the tension rods on the 6th Avenue bridge. And we're planning to replace the tension rods and pavement structure on the 6th Avenue bridge after the school is closed for the summer. Duncan Road Pump Station, we have purchased and received the pump station and wet well for this project. 
The design for this project is now fully complete. We are in the process of finalizing the tender package for release and this project is expected to be completed over the summer. The raw water supply study. Uh, we have successfully awarded this study to LM Engineering. The proposed schedule uh, for this study is to be completed at the end of August. Uh, the 24-hour recycling transfer station. The engineering department has been working with the regional district uh, on this project. The design and tender is now complete. We are in the process of scheduling the construction of the facility at the existing recycling site. Uh, Woodworth Dam Rehabilitation Project. We have completed the baseline information, uh, including coring of the existing spillway surface. We are in the process of getting a new spillway design completed by our engineering consultants. Unfortunately, the work can only be completed during certain conditions. We need dry weather flow with no flow over the spillway. Therefore, the plan is to tackle it over the summer. Uh, water strategic plan. This plan started in 2012 and involves several components to be completed over many years. The idea behind this plan is to update our water system with small projects and make it flow and circulate better. Uh, so far we have purchased water, the WaterCAD computer system in order to monitor our, our water system and complete the small projects. We also have. We are also in the process of getting two proposals: one for a new HVAC system at the Schwatlands pump station, and the other is for maintenance on Montreal uh, Circle Reservoir, 17th Street. The underground utilities are now complete. Uh, the roadway is now temporarily open until the next phase is started. We're in the process of tendering out the retaining wall, roadway pavement, and curbing gutters. Fraser Street rehabilitation. Uh, due to budgetary and staffing constraints, we have decided to postpone this project until 2015. However, we will complete the required engineering work so that the project is shelf ready for next year's construction season. The liquid waste management plan. We are currently in the process of completing the third and final stage of the LWMP. Uh, this is the final stage where we set financial and timeline goals. The final paper will need to be reviewed by the local and technical advisory committee then council review and approval, and then finally submitted to the province for review and approval. Additionally, we have completed and submitted our identification report on our outfalls to be in compliance with the new federal wastewater regulations. The Hayes Creek Sewer Project Phase 3. We are still in the process of completing the necessary upgrades to the existing infrastructure. These upgrades include massive reduction of infiltration and replacement of extremely deteriorated uh, sewer, sewer main line. Once these upgrades are complete, we will look to tender out the new pump station project. Unfortunately, due to these upgrades, this project may not be completed until next year. Airport ferry upgrades. Uh, we have just completed major upgrades to the airport ferry docks on both sides. These upgrades include replacement of piles and other structurally failed members. Next, we are looking at replacement of certain pontoons for ramp stability. Landfill expansion. Uh, we are currently completing the new ring road at the landfill. This ring road will give us approximately five more years worth of fill capacity. As, as well, we are actively working with a contractor in our quarry to have a new cell developed so we can transition over into it seamlessly once required. This new cell will provide the city with approximately 35 years worth of airspace. All of the new development will require a new leachate collection system that, will, that we are in the process of designing with our landfill consultants. The 2014 paving program. This is an annual program where we resurface and replace sections of roads with new asphalt. Uh, we are in the process of identifying what streets or roads will get attention this year. It should be noted that we try to spread the paving throughout the community on both sides of town and in the downtown core. Sidewalk renewal program. Uh, the city has identified 3rd Avenue sidewalks as an ongoing issue. We have created this program to replace the sidewalks, let down transitions and crosswalks. Our task this year is to identify and work on problems, as, uh, problem areas as well as address the crosswalks. Next year we will start the rehabilitation program a block at a time. The water utility. Uh, this annual utility is used for water mainline maintenance. This includes water breaks, service maintenance, lift stations maintenance, uh, valve and hydrant maintenance, disinfection maintenance. It should be noted that as our infrastructure gets older, what our, the water system is requiring additional attention as we are seeing more and more water breaks every year. The sewer utility. This annual util utility is used for sewer mainline maintenance. 
This includes sewer breaks, service maintenance, pump station maintenance, sewer manhole maintenance, and infiltration reduction. As well, it should be noted that as the infrastructure gets older, the sewer system is requiring additional attention as, our, as we are seeing more sewer breaks and extreme infiltration issues in certain areas of town. And finally, the road utility. This annual utility is used for road repair, uh, includes pothole, uh, pothole repair, storm service maintenance, catch basin maintenance, bridge maintenance, retaining wall maintenance, storm manhole maintenance, and curb and sidewalk repairs. As well, it should be noted that as our transportation infrastructure gets older, our road network, and si our road network system is requiring additional attention as we are seeing more heavy traffic volumes. Thank you for your time. Nope, I've provided you a general in, uh, overview of our current capital projects and a bit of the state of our infrastructure. Are there any questions? Thank you very much. There's a lot of information there. If you'd wait, please, Councillor Cunningham. Councillor Kenny is ahead of you. <clears throat> Go ahead, please. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Richard, you said that we're putting off the uh, 2015 uh, program for Fraser Street till 2015. Well, will you be able to, or is it in consideration of doing that parking area in front of the senior center, which has been promised for about five years? Um, we, we right now we're looking at um, putting it off just due to staff constraints um, and and budgetary constraints. Um, but I can I can address that later in in a, in, in a council uh, report if you'd like. Yes. Councillor Cunningham, go ahead. A couple things. So you say that the uh, under road work is done on 17th and you're putting it out to tender. When can we see completion on that, roughly? Thank you, Councillor Cunningham. Uh, bearing in mind, uh, Mr. Pucci, that the moment you give a date, everybody in the community will hold you to it. <laughs> Thank you, Your Worship. Um, 17th Street, uh, I knew I'd have some questions on that. Uh, just to give you some background, this wasn't a planned project. Uh, we've had several breaks in a short period of time. Uh, we had to act fast on that. Um, so we are going out to tender with uh, with the wall design. We are hoping to get out the tenders out by the end of the week. Uh, once we have a construction schedule, we will inform Council of uh, updates of uh, foreclosure. Thank okay, you. You mentioned a contractor out at the landfill. Who is it? And is it gone out to contract or is it a continuing contract? Uh, the, the, the contractor at the landfill is uh, Coast Industrial Construction, CIC. Uh, they, uh, they are working to um, put our ring road in around the, uh, the existing landfill site to give us uh, more fill capacity. They're also uh, in our quarry for the next uh, four years, I believe. Uh, we've done a, a sort of a trade for the rock that they're putting uh, in our ring road. Okay, and the cell they're going to build, is that going to go out to contract or is this going to be handed to them? Uh, no. Uh, wait a minute, oh. Councillor Cunningham. Nobody's getting anything handed to them. That company bid and put in a contract, and the contract was accepted by the city approximately a year ago. Oh, well, that's more information I wasn't given. Okay, now the other thing, the seniors parking, even if it's not going to be part of the Fraser Street uh, project, there, I would like to see at least the potholes fixed in that, if uh, you could maybe include that in some of your potholes identification program it probably wouldn't take much to take because you could just have to drive a block or two and you find them uh, the problem there councillor cunningham is uh the elevations and the water does tend to pool there yeah. and and they have uh, done some paving there in the past uh, on patches but uh like a lot of areas in the community the amount of moisture uh makes it hard to uh, have it stave with any uh, extended period of time. Uh, there is considerations for a redesign of that area to allow the seniors to, in fact, park more vehicles there. And it's unfortunate there's a bit of a delay. Okay. That's all. Councillor Ashley. 
Um, I don't so much have a question, Maura. I just wanted to take the opportunity to, to thank staff and, and uh, Mr. Pucci for coming forward because I think a lot of times the community doesn't realize all of the work that staff is doing sort of behind the scenes and under the scenes, if you will. And uh, it's important work and it's that's the basic uh, place where most of the money is being spent on infrastructure. And I, I think it's really good that uh, you came forward and we know more about what's going on. So thank you very much. Thank you on behalf of Council for coming down here this evening. We'll move to the question period from the public. Is there anybody this evening who has any questions with regards to the city's operation? I'll call again. If not, uh, we'll adjourn and reconvene to the regular meeting of Council. Moved by Councillor Kinney, seconded by Councillor Carlick Pearson. Is there any discussion? Questions have been called. Those in favor? Thank you. That motion's adopted. We'll move back to the regular meeting agenda for the council. The first item under that agenda for council's consideration is the adoption of the minutes from the meeting of April 28th. And the recommendation is to, uh, pardon me, I'm on the wrong area here. The first item for consideration of the council is the adoption of the regular meeting agenda. The recommendation is that this agenda in front of the council be adopted as circulated. Moved by Councillor Ashley, seconded by Councillor Carlick Pearson. Is there any discussion? Question has been called. Those in favor? Thank you. We're adopting the agenda for today, Councillor Kay. Yeah. So we adopt the agenda before we proceed. Next are the minutes for the Council's consideration, and the recommendation is that these minutes be adopted. The first set of minutes are for the Special Council meeting of April 14th, 2014. Moved by Councillor Ashley, seconded by Councillor Carlick Pearson. Is there any discussion? Any errors or omissions? None. Questions have been called. Those in favor? Thank you. Those minutes are adopted. Next is the recommendation for the minutes of the regular council meeting of April 14th, 2014. And of course, the recommendation there is to adopt. Moved by Councillor Ashley, seconded by Councillor Garon. Are there any errors or omissions? Questions have been called. Those in favor? Thank you. Those minutes are adopted. And the last set of minutes concern the special council meeting of April 16th, 2014. And they come with the Recommendation that they be adopted. Moved by Councillor Garan, seconded by Councillor Carlick Pearson. Are there, yes, errors or omissions? The only thing that I noted on there is that um, uh, I believe that the three of us that voted against asked for our opposition to be recorded and it's not recorded in the minutes. So if we could have that added. Certainly, Mr. Mandrick, if you would. Yes, Your Worship. Thank you. So we'll adopt those minutes with the inclusion of the record of opposition. Question has been called. Those in favor? Thank you. Those minutes are adopted. Next, under petitions and delegations, we have Mrs. Barbara Gruber, the president of the Special Events Society, and she has sent a letter to the council regarding city travel for the city float. Mrs. Gruber, would you like to come forward, please? Good evening. Thank you for coming down here. We've uh, already kept you for an hour. And in fact, I'm going to uh, ask you to stay because another item that you requested to myself for the city's consideration is also on the agenda, and that concerns the electrical upgrades to the Mariners Memorial Park. But let's deal with the uh, your request, your initial request here on the city travel for the city parade float. The grayish green button there. Okay. Um, We wrote a letter a couple of months ago to the city um, asking for the city councillors, volunteers, whatever you may call them, to take the parade float to local festivals. And I mean area type local festivals. Um, 
we are not applying for money to take the float ourselves, the Special Events Society. Actually, it was the mayor that asked for the cost to take the float to other parades in our area. And you would need volunteers to do this and a half ton or three quarter ton truck to do this, okay, which we do not own. Uh, it was built for the city actually down south. There was nobody here that could build floats. We got a grant from the port specifically to build a float for the city that was roadworthy. We have our own little float that we put in Seafest Parade every year, but it is not in any shape to take out the highway. It would fall apart at the first bump out there. Um, we've included a cost package on what we think it would cost to go to the parade festivals in the area. It's not expensive, but somebody would have to learn how to put the sides up and down on the float. It, it is to be roadworthy. It has to be encapsulated. And we had it for last year, but I gather nobody got together on it to take it anywhere. Uh, there was consideration of a request to take it to Ketchikan last year. And uh, the city manager was very gracious in offering his uh, experience and knowledge in determining how to put the float together and how to collapse it down to make it travel. And we found out that the ferry, the car deck on the ferry out of Prince Rupert to Ketchikan for the 4th of July was full. So we okay. we couldn't even take a vehicle of our own. But we also have Terrace in August. Kitimat in July, um, Smithers in August, and these would be areas much simpler to take this float to right. than having to take it on a ferry. Uh, oh, but we've also had Masset request that we come over there with the float, or that you go over there with the float. And, and uh, what's it called? Grand Isle. We've had numerous phone calls. They would love Prince Rupert to participate in their celebrations there. It would be wonderful promotion for our area to go to the festivals in our area. I mean, I've got nothing against Catch Can, but th they see no point in coming down here for our festivals at all. They never have. And and uh, they they actually do uh, attend. Uh... Well, they don't tell us they attend. They do not participate no, they, in the parade or anything. They, a group of them came down and watched the parade, and we also had uh, some of them visiting on July the 1st. Yes. Did they, they participate? Okay. Were, pardon me, they were in the parade last year. The year before, did, they did came they, down and watched. Did they? Well, they didn't let us know. Please go ahead, Councillor uh, Ashley. Uh, just, uh, I remember s them coming and seeing them. Uh, basically, they didn't have like a special float. They had a, a car and some of the... Um, Borough members, because they're not called council members up there, were walking and handing out uh, some things of the assembly stuff. members. But yes, I, they probably didn't let you know that they were. Yeah. Anyway, this other areas, you know, would like us to participate. They've been coming for 10, 15 years and, and participating with, with CFEST down here. Well, now, other than that, um, I don't have too much else to say. Okay, well, we'll, uh, we'll have Council ask you a few questions, I believe. Okay. Councillor Carlick Pearson. Hi, thank you for, for being here. Uh, I, I, I think that it's very valuable that we, we do, you know, sort of market ourselves regionally, but with that being said, I also don't think that it's necessary that we market ourselves right now, especially with our bludgeon budget that we've been dealing with in the, you know, in the last while. Um, for all of these to go to all of these, it's fifty six hundred dollars to go. I'm not. I'm. I'm not sure. It's. It's probably not something that's obviously budgeted for. I'm not. Uh, special events doesn't have the funds to pay, so this would have to come out of our city budget to do. Uh, I don't. I don't see it being feasible this year. We're. We're not suggesting you go to all festivals. Pick one if you want, uh, Terrace, as close as you can go, go there and come back in one day. 
at 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 your your basic cost is your is the fuel to get you there. Uh, if you find you can go to two, fine. But but you know it it the other communities would notice also if you were participating elsewhere. There is a five thousand dollar allotment in the city's budget to facilitate this sort of thing. Uh, but it's whether or not council members are available to participate and of course uh, whether or not they're prepared to drive a vehicle trailering the float and uh, uh, have the I understand that it's actual training to take the float down and or set it up and take it down that's not that much training. no okay that's probably why the city <laughs> manager had offered uh, councillor Garon thank you mrs. Gruber for your presentation <clears throat> um, I think it's something we don't need to decide on tonight. I think if we find that some of us want to go and do this, that we, we, we know what the cost will be, and, and that's all spilled out for us. Well, that's great information for us to know. So I just thank you for your efforts, and um, hopefully we can get this float out to one or maybe two places this year, but we'll just have to wait and see Patrick, who's available. I am here. Uh, I have a truck. <coughs> Ford, though, I don't know if they'd allow it to freight. But, uh, you know, I could probably, with the uh, volunteer of another counselor or two, maybe make Terrace and possibly yeah, nice Smithers. Suggest. I'd have to look at my schedule over the summer, but Terrace in one day would be no problem, probably. Certainly. Okay, well, thank you for that. Uh, counselor Kinney. That's exactly what I was going to say. So you're volunteering to go with yeah. Counselor Cunningham. Yeah. Counselor Cunningham, you've just uh, got yourself a volunteer there. Are there any further <laughs> Are there any uh, further questions for Mrs. Gruber? Councillor Ashley. I, I guess I, I thank you for coming forward, and I probably misread when I because I, I thought you guys were asking for money so that volunteers could go. So it kind of does put a little more onus on us because there's seven of us, and when do you have time to go and do these things? I certainly agree that if there's a way that we can go to a couple of these festivals, it would be good. And and perhaps I'm I know that you're looking for for city council, but I'm thinking that. If there is a possibility, maybe we can even find a couple of volunteers that could also go in addition to city council members just to kind of like lighten the load because I'm guessing that some of the stuff might be a little bit heavy to carry or, or to move for uh, whatever the sides that you said and things like that. So um, so thank you, and I think it's, it's something that maybe we can go to a couple and and then we can keep this in our in mind as we move forward, and if we then all of a sudden get some more money or other things, then we can look at trying to expand it. Well, thank you. Thank you all. Thanks, Thanks very much. I'll, I'll ask you, though, Mrs. Gruber, to please stay... Uh, in the gallery, and I'll call you on the other. Uh, you certainly got all the information on that request. Next, we'll move to reports and recommendations, and there's a report from the engineering coordinator concerning 901 First Avenue West, and this is the commercial hotel building, and it's a request for a wreck and remove. And uh, the recommendation is that the building located at 901 First Avenue West and legally described as Lot 13 and 14, Block 9, Section 1, Range 5, Plan Number PRP 923, District Lot 1992, Land District 14, Manual Class Code D442, Percentage Deviation 0, 0.00, Neighborhood Code 241, Land Use 36, Actual Use 254, with a PDI number of 006-088-759 and 006-088-856 be declared a hazard under Section 73 and a nuisance under Section 74 of the Community Charter and that the registered owner, HSS Management Limited, be required to remove or demolish the building within 30 days. And further, for the purpose of this resolution, remove or demolish shall mean to either remove or cause to be removed all building components, including but not limited to the roof, beams, walls, floors, electrical, plumbing, and mechanical systems to the foundation, 
and if there are any concrete or wood pilings or piers, that they be removed and the building site be filled to the prevailing grade. And I've noticed in the report that uh, it outlines the building is slowly collapsing onto itself and poses a threat to health and safety of citizens and vehicle traffic. So I'm going to suggest to the council, although this resolution allows 30 days, we're still getting high winds, which are also creating concerns for that structure, that we reduce the 30 days to 15 days. So I'll put that out there for council's consideration. Mr. Pucci, have you got anything to add to this? Uh, no, Your Worship. Thank you. Councillor Ashley. Um, well, I'll make that motion and with the change to 15 days as long as that is legally uh, okay. Yes, it's allowed. Okay. It's, council has the discretion to uh, change the dates. Okay. So 15 days. So it's been moved by Councillor Ashley. Sec it. It's actually been seconded by Councillor Kinney. Okay. Is there any discussion on the matter? Questions have been called. Those in favor? Thank you. Motion's adopted. Did you have a comment, though, Councilor? Uh, you're welcome to. Okay. Report from the engineering coordinator. This is the Mariners Park electrical upgrade. The recommendation is uh, that Council consider the matter and advise how they wish to proceed. We have M Mr. Pucci here who outlined his report, and Mrs. Gruber. If you'd come up here, Mrs. Gruber, you can then outline the request and the reason for it. I think it's important because we hold all of our events in the Mariners Memorial Park. And uh, perhaps on the other side of Mr. Pucci would be easier. Or me Okay. I don't know what's happening with that cord there. Usually you can wrap it around the room twice. Tonight nobody can get it out more than two feet. Uh, Mr. Pucci. Sure. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so the, ma the main objective of, uh, of the Mariners Park electrical upgrade is to provide additional outlets behind the public washrooms and along the walkway, as well as provide an outlet for a spider board near the tot lot. Um, the analysis is that if council wishes to proceed with the Mariners Park electrical upgrade, the uh, park and community would benefit from the following. It improves the functionality of Mariners Park, improves the aesthetics and appearance of Mariners Park, provides a more orderly system of power usage for performances, contributes the, to the professionalism of the performances, contributes to the overall effort of the community to rebrand itself as a more outdoor orientated uh, community. Uh, however, the cons of entering into this project this year is as follows. Uh, Mariners Park would be in a state of construction for a long period of time, possibly up to six weeks due to BC Hydro and contractor availability, and therefore access to the park would be limited or restricted. Uh, staff needed to perform non-specialized -spec work will be reassigned from currently planned city projects, and the project was not planned to be done in 2014, and therefore was not included in the 2014 budget. Uh, costs associated with this project, the financial implications should council wish to proceed with this is approximately fifty-five to seventy-five thousand dollars depending on the number and placement of outlets. It should be noted that a bulk of this cost is due to new hydro servicing and part uh, to the park and the amount of site restoration. Additionally as uh, this was not included in the 2014 annual budget the project would need to be uh, the project would need to be provided for via a council resolution to utilize operating surplus of the current year. Uh, we wish to council to re receive this report and advise staff on how they wish to proceed. Thank you. Thank you. And Mrs. Gruber, if you would uh, tell the community at large why this request is being made. I had no idea I was going to be speaking on this. Um, the way That's things... what happens when you show up. <laughs> it is appropriate, though, because it is your request on behalf of the Special Events Society. The, the way it is now, when we hold... Um, any festival, any part of our festivals in Mariner's Park, we have cords running through the whole park with little red cones on them so the children aren't tripping on them. It really isn't safe. And that's mainly what it boils down to. It's it's not safe. And and it's not... We don't, we don't have plug-ins where we need them. 
and that's why we have cords running all through the park when you know july the first or and uh sea fest both you know we we just can't have it okay thank you very much that's all i have to say it's dangerous no, it's, the it's way uh, it is. succinct and to the point we'll see if there's questions from members of council Councillor Carlick Pearson, then Councillor Garand. Please proceed. Or did I get that order wrong? No, 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 it's no. all good. Okay. I don't think we, I don't think it matters right now, hey? Okay, thank you. Uh, do you think that it's such an issue, a safety issue, that we can't manage for another year or so to go, you know, without this upgrade? Uh, no. To be honest with you, I, I I think if we have to wait another year, we have to wait another year. But the first child that falls over a cord and breaks her arm, I wouldn't want to be in the city's shoes. Please go ahead, Councillor Carlick Pearson. It's just that this year, you know, we've recently had major talks about digging into our surplus. We're increasing taxes. We're financially strapped, you know, and... Um, to be discussing something of this quantity for special events. I understand special events. I, I, I value everything that you guys do, but in this situation, I, I can't be for this because it's just not, it's just not feasible for us to even be having this conversation right now. But, you know, don't get me wrong. It's, it's, it is, like I said, I really admire what you guys do. <laughs> Councillor Garan. Thank you again, Mrs. Gruber, but I'm just going to echo exactly what Councillor Garlic Pearson said. Um, we've struggled over this budget. It's done, and, and I, I just rather put it to bed for now, but I, I'd be interested in putting putting it somewhere on the budget for next year if we can squeeze it in. So thank you for all your efforts. <laughs> Councillor Ashley. So I, I would also... Um, say that you know this year is probably not feasible but next year and that also gives us some time that if say grants come forward or those sorts of things because often they do that that might allow us to like you know lower the cost for the city and stuff um, I certainly see w the value in the project it's just unfortunately with all of the different you know other infrastructure costs that we have I don't see it happening this year but uh, thank you very much uh, you know on behalf of everyone for how much you guys do uh, there may be an opportunity coming forward in the Build Canada Infrastructure Fund if the criteria fits. Uh, last year, the city received $663,000 of gas tax money uh, through the federal government program. Uh, perhaps if there's some increases there this year, this could also be a consideration. Uh, but the council will take to heart your comment about if they promise to consider it in 2015, you'll... Uh, be silent about it. But thank you very much for coming down here because it's not very often that the council gets to hear the reason for some of these requests. I mean, certainly Public Works advocates for what we need. And of course, one of our fundamental roles here is to look after core services. But something like this, uh, well, it's, it's important to the community because of the value that the events bring to the community. And uh, Mariner's Memorial Park is, is the most well-used park in the community. Yeah. Councillor Kenny. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, Barb, was that going to be for the, uh, will that also be the plugins for the vendors? It would be a combination of, combination. yeah. Yes. It would cover off the vendors and the stage programs. <laughs> Thank you very much. Please, please Can go I ahead. Can I ask you a question? Oh, certainly. Is there going to be a top put on the bandstand again? In in is there any thought of it in the future? I believe there is some thought of it, but I don't believe it's in the budget this year, Mrs. Bombin. Was there any provisions for that? Uh, no, there wasn't, Your Worship. It's it's very unfortunate. The other structure we had there was good, but somebody in this community vandalized it and they cut the straps which twisted the frame 
beyond any use, which is a real slight on the community. Uh, I don't have any regard for people that vandalize things to begin with, but something like this has ruined a lot of opportunity for a lot of enjoyment by the greater population of this community. And we'd all like to see something there, perhaps even something permanent, but uh, it, it won't happen this year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Ashley. Just out of curiosity, and if somebody doesn't know, I, I'm willing to wait until later. Yes. Um, but uh, how much would it cost, or does it, do we know the cost of replacing that um, cover? I don't have that off the top okay. of my head. Uh, Mr. Pucci, have you got any idea of the value of that structure? Uh, yes, Your Worship. The original one was around $27,000. Councillor Ashley. I won't go into detail here, but I might have an idea, so I'll talk to you later about it. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Mr. Pucci, thank you. Mr. Mandrick. Yes, Your Worship. What's your suggestion here for a motion? I might, I might suggest, Your Worship, that uh, a it motion be deferred be... to the 2015 budget for consideration. That's exactly what I would recommend. Good, thank you. Moved by Councillor Ashley, seconded by Councillor Kinney. Is there any discussion? Question has been called. Those in favor? Thank you. We'll move on to bylaws and development permits. Uh, for Council's consideration is a zoning amendment bylaw number 3346 2014. Recommendation that Council give second reading to the zoning amendment bylaw so stated. Mr. Krekic, would you like to outline the intent of this bylaw? Should Council give it second reading? Should it go to public hearing? And should the bylaw then be given a third reading and finally adopted? Certainly, Your Worship. Uh, <clears throat> this uh, this bylaw is for a project on Sixth um, Street. Mr. Sleva has applied to rezone um, to allow uh, conversion of a duplex to a four-unit apartment. Uh, this bylaw received the first reading at the last council meeting. Since then, I have referred uh, this uh, project to. Uh, internal um, uh, capacity that we have here and externally to Ministry of Highways and Transportation have not received any comments that would preclude recommendation to proceed to the public hearing and ability to advertise as prescribed in the legislation uh, for public notifications. Right. You said 6th Street, but it's actually 6th Avenue East and close to 6th Avenue East and Dunsmere. West. West. Pardon me, it is West, yes. <laughs> I apologize, yes. It's east east is east and west is west, west and, and never the twain the shall, meet. Never shall meet. I come from east. <laughs> Thank you very much. Seconded by Councillor Kinney. Discussion by members of council. Questions have been called. Those in favor? Thank you. That's adopted. Next for council's consideration is an application for a development variance permit, and it is at this property at 521 and 5. 23 6th Avenue West. The recommendation is that the development variance permit application DP-14-07 for 521 and 523 6th Avenue West proceeds to the public notification process. Mr. Krekic, if you could outline the reason for the development variance permit. Certainly, Your Worship. Uh, this um this uh, application belongs in a same dossier application for the same project. In this situation, um, the requirement for development variance permit is to uh, allow encroachment in a front property uh, setback by, by exactly 1.18 meters. Um, the encroachment is not, it's, it's simply uh, legitimizing the existing non illegal non-conforming use and it will it doesn't have any visual effect uh, effects on the neighborhood or surrounding properties of course the development variance permit requires us to go to public notification which will be conducted at the same time as a zoning bylaw and uh, would be uh, discussed at the next council meeting thank you i'll ask councils consider moved by councillor garan seconded by councillor ashley any discussion? Question, Councillor Garan. 
I just want to commend Mr. Silwa for doing such a wonderful job on that block. It's um, really improved it, and I know he's busy with his business, and I, I really commend him, and I hope this passes. So. He's already improved two buildings there, and this would be a third all in a row. Yeah. Further discussion? Question has been called. Those in favor? Thank you. That motion is adopted. We'll move down to reports, questions, and inquiries of members of council. Are there any this evening? It was good to have the report from Public Works there. I'll move uh, right into the mayor's report then. Uh, the North and Health Authority has advised that a portable MRI machine will, in the future, be provided to increase MRI services in some of the communities in the Northwest Regional Hospital District area. I attended the BC Mayor's Caucus Spring Meeting, and some of the topics discussed were small community grants, which are given by agreement, and this agreement will expire in 2017, gas tax funding, and the need for flexibility as to where municipalities can apply those funds. And I've already stated this, but Prince Rupert received last year $663,000. Regional districts uh, were created in 1965 and have never changed, uh, and that as a form of local government needs to be modernized. Uh, downloading from other levels of government uh, that is still continuing as there are changes to regulations that are imposed on local governments without consultation. This requires local governments to come up with money to affect those changes. Another item is ambulance services. There are a need for more ambulances in the province. Currently, it results in delays in response times, which cost municipalities more funds, as there's a greater reliance on first responders from municipal government fire rescue departments. Policing, uh, that's to do with the cost of policing, and uh, the feeling is it needs to be equalized. Some communities pay a great deal more. Uh, aging infrastructure in all its forms, whether it's roads, bridges, sewer, and water lines, uh, continues to be the greatest concern. And the last item is the role of the Municipal Auditor General. And this is a new entity, and local governments need to know and understand the function of the Auditor General and how to facilitate uh, that uh, There is a press release from the BC Mayor's Caucus meeting and the BC Mayor's Caucus will pursue creation of a Premier's Roundtable to discuss public policy changes that affect local government budgets and delivery of services. Another issue that was discussed was having a standalone local government ministry to better provide for the needs of local governments, whether they're villages, towns, cities, or district municipalities and uh, regional districts in a more timely manner. The BC Mayor's Steering Committee members are the mayors of Cranbrook, Fort St. John, Kamloops, Prince George, Surrey, Prince Rupert, Smithers, Port Coquitlam, Victoria, and Sayward. And my last item is a request of Council, and I'd like Council to consider this, and we can discuss it at our next meeting. And their request is that the City of Prince Rupert ask the Skeena Queen Charlotte Regional District to implement the tracking of staff time for a six-month period to actually determine where the Regional district, district staff time is being spent and the results could be considered during next year's budget and adjustments could be made to the appropriate individual budgets for each service and function the Regional District provides. And that could, in fact, uh, help save the City of Prince Rupert some money. Councillor Ashley. I'm not saying that's a bad idea and I know we're going to discuss it next time. Um, it's unfortunate that right now the current uh, CFO or is on maternity leave um, from the regional district but I know that they have done some of that tracking of time and there has been some stuff and what I'm wondering is maybe and we can discuss it at the next meeting but maybe uh, something that could be considered is seeing whether or not um, we could get a presentation from someone in the regional district just to tell us what's going on now 
and then it, then we would have a better idea of whether or not a, a, what you're talking about is necessary. So you could see what they've yeah. been doing. Well, with the greatest respect, I wouldn't bring it up unless I felt it was necessary. I hear stories that even though the city of Prince Rupert has a weighted vote on financial matters at the table there, that our members, even with that weighted vote, get overruled. So if we want some redress here, if we want to try and save some money, I see this as a simple and efficient way to determine who is requiring the most amount of time, administrative time, down there, and whether, in fact, there should be adjustments made to save you as representatives there, us as a council, and residents of the city of Prince Rupert, taxpayer money. Please go ahead. And I'm not disagreeing that that is something that's not a good idea. What I'm trying to explain, and I guess it, that that has been done. They have done that, and there have been changes made. But uh, we can discuss it at the next meeting. Certainly. Uh, I, I, I can appreciate the work that's been done there, but I'm I'm wondering if it has actually resulted in much savings to us as we're aware that some of the smaller unincorporated communities are requiring a lot more time. That concludes my report. Uh, I thank everybody for the meeting this evening and their comments. I'll ask Council if there's nothing further for a motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Kinney, seconded by Councillor Carlick Pearson that this meeting adjourn. Discussion? Questions been called. Those in favor? Thank you. This meeting stands adjourned. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.